The year is 1944. The Second World War is coming to an end. Germany, Finland, and the Soviet Union signed the Moscow Armistice, according to which Finland had to disarm German troops and drive them out of Lapland. The Germans began to use scorched earth tactics, destroying all roads, bridges, villages, and towns in their path. Deep within the vast Lapland wilderness, there lives a man named Atami, who's chosen to put the war behind him. These days, he's a gold prospector, and one fateful day, he stumbles upon a nugget of gold glistening in the water. Atami can't contain his joy and lets out a triumphant yell. Without any witnesses in sight, except for his dog and horse, he eagerly begins excavating the riverbank, hoping to uncover the load. As the evening settles in, Atami sits by the crackling campfire, when suddenly a fleet of military planes roars overhead. The man continues digging for the next couple of days until he stumbles upon a valuable gold deposit. After extracting the gold, Atami cleans up, packs his stuff, and sets off across the tundra landscape toward Rovaniemi, the capital of Lapland. Along the way, he encounters a group of SS troops led by Obersturfuhrer Bruno Heldorf. In the back of their truck, there are several captured Finnish women. Atami rides past them, and though one of the soldiers, Wolf, considers shooting him, Bruno stops him, saying he's riding to his death anyway. The convoy proceeds. A little later, Atami meets another group of German soldiers. They're more aggressive. Their commander orders the man to dismount and says that Atami has nowhere to go because there's nothing ahead. The commander examines the man's belongings, realizes he's a prospector, and pushes Atami off his horse. The other soldiers find gold in his bags and rejoice that they're now rich. Atami sends his dog away, but the Germans start shooting at the animal as it runs away. The commander is about to execute Atami and orders him to kneel down, but instead Atami, enraged, kills the commander by stabbing him in the head, then using their own weapons, the man brutally massacres the rest of the German soldiers. Hearing machine gun fire, Bruno stops the platoon. By the time he arrives at the scene of the massacre in a tank, Atami has already gone. Bruno takes a gold nugget from the hands of a dying soldier, shows it to his subordinate, and twirls it thoughtfully in his fingers. The officer gazes ahead, following Atami's path, and suddenly realizes what happened. The tank swiftly catches up to Atami, unleashing a barrage of gunfire including machine gun rounds. However, the man on horseback manages to evade the onslaught only to unwittingly ride into a field of landmines. Bruno, aware of this danger, ceases the pursuit, and moments later the prospector's horse is engulfed in a mine-triggered explosion. Upon hearing the blast and seeing the billowing smoke, Bruno grins with satisfaction. Atami wakes up, mourns the loss of his horse, and sees numerous mines and scattered gold nuggets around. As he begins to gather them, sitting by the roadside, a whole German platoon arrives, and Bruno sees how much gold Atami has gathered. The officer stops Wolf from firing until Atami finishes collecting the nuggets. Meanwhile, Atami grabs a hefty rock from the ground. Just as Atami stands upright, Bruno issues the order to open fire. However, the man swiftly vanishes into the smoke from the explosions. One by one, the mines detonate, prompting Bruno to command all his soldiers to shoot. Amidst the chaos and smoke, Atami retreats, shielding himself with a metal dish he'd been using to sift rocks while searching for gold. Sometime later, when the minefield is still shrouded in smoke, Bruno sends one of the soldiers forward, but Atami hurls a mine right at his head. The soldier dies. After a brief pause, Bruno sends more soldiers, who also fall victim to the mines, as even their remains trigger the explosions. Bruno then tells Wolf to lead two Finnish women, who'd been captured, tie them together and send them ahead to traverse the field. A convoy follows closely behind. Among the remains of the horse, Bruno finds a dog tag, belonging to Atami, and looks at it thoughtfully. Wolf contacts the general and he gives the officer orders, turn around and urgently retreat toward Norway. The general mentions that the platoon is fortunate that only seven soldiers lost their lives. He also identifies the owner of the dog tag. Atami was one of the Finnish commandos and even his comrades were afraid of him. 
so it's wise not to cross paths with the Tommy. He's a seasoned veteran of the Winter War, during which he tragically lost his family and home. After that, he transformed into a relentless avenger on the battlefield. But Tommy doesn't take orders from anyone, and the Finns found it hard to control him, so they decided to release him into the wilderness to hunt down enemy patrols. Astonishingly, Atami managed to eliminate approximately 300 enemy soldiers, earning himself the nickname Koshe, which means immortal. The convoy continues to move after the captured women. Bruno refuses to obey the order and turn towards Norway because they have nowhere to run to. The war is lost. It'll all be over in a couple of months. When the soldiers return, they'll all be executed for war crimes, so they need to get Atami's gold to save themselves. Meanwhile, the wounded Atami reaches the remains of the burned truck to treat his wounds with ash and remove the bullets. After he's done, he passes out. Atami's dog approaches the truck but sits down at a distance. The dog alerts his owner to the approaching German convoy with a series of barks. Atami seizes the chance to sneak beneath the truck and puncture its gas tank, causing gasoline to spill onto the road. This prevents the German dogs from picking up Atami's scent. After crawling out from under the truck, Atami makes an attempt to flee, but the soldiers spot him and wound him in the leg. Bruno commands to release the dogs, but Atami, soaked in gasoline, sets himself on fire with a single match and runs toward the lake. The soldiers keep firing until the man jumps into the water. Approaching the lake, Bruno remarks that even immortals require air. If Atami is still alive, he'll resurface. True to Bruno's words, Atami emerges, prompting Wolf to take a shot, staining the water red. Bruno orders to retrieve the gold. The soldiers get in a boat, reach the lake's center, and then dive in. Atami is already waiting for them, swiftly dispatching his adversaries by slitting their throats and inhaling the air that escapes from them. The lone remaining German soldier attempts to row to the far shore to escape and evade death. Bruno warns him about desertion and Wolf ends his escape with a well-aimed shot. The boat carrying the deceased soldier arrives at the shore, and Atami emerges from underneath it onto dry land. Wolf takes his position behind the machine gun and opens fire at Atami, but Atami takes cover behind the fallen soldier's body, managing to make his escape. However, in that very moment, Bruno spots Atami's dog nearby. The officer calls the dog and instructs the soldiers to find a boat. Atami continues to move forward and eventually comes to the city of Rovaniemi, but finds only burning ruins in its place. The man is pained to see this and walks away from the city to find shelter in the remains of a burned-out gas station. There, he sits up to fall asleep and hears the voices of the dying, women and children, the sounds of explosions. Atami clutches the bag of gold nuggets tighter. The man gets up again when he hears his dog barking and goes outside. The dog runs up to him and Atami is happy to see him until he notices that there is a lighted smoke bomb tied to his pet. He manages to save the dog, but Atami is thrown backwards by the shock wave and loses consciousness for a few seconds. When Atami regains consciousness, he sees Wolf preparing the gallows and Bruno leaning over him. The officer offers Atami to say the last word, but he remains silent. The Germans hang the man, and the young tank crewman even takes off his hat as a sign of respect. Bruno does the same, and then puts one gold nugget in Atami's pocket, saying he earned it. The Germans leave. Atami, still alive, attempts to lean on a nail to shift his weight, but slips. Despite the pain, he impales his leg on a nearby metal bar and waits through the night like this. Come morning, a German plane zooms over the gas station, causing a rush of air that knocks down the sign, which was doubling as a makeshift gallows. Atami nearly chokes as he loses his footing, but manages to fall to the ground in time. His loyal dog, never far away, tries to wake him up with worried whimpers. The German pilots are on the hunt for fuel and are astonished to discover the man on the gallows is still breathing. The senior pilot suggests his junior comrade just shoot both the survivor and the dog, but the junior pilot hesitates. This moment of indecision proves fatal, as Atami swiftly knocks him down, causing the pilot to accidentally fire his pistol and fall to his death. The senior pilot, unaware of what just happened, 
believes the shot was meant for Otami. He then orders to kill the dog, but it defies the command by persistently barking. Annoyed and suspecting something's wrong, the pilot ventures outside to investigate and promptly gets hit by a brick. For some time, Atami just sits there, fiddling with the nugget. He even decides to bury it and give up, but then he notices that the pilot is alive, sees the airplane, and gets an idea. He tends to his wounds, pulling mine fragments out of them, and finally takes the airplane. The dog stays at the gas station, eating something from a German helmet. Meanwhile, the German convoy continues to move forward. Bruno tells two of his men that an airplane is waiting for them, and the rest of the squad will get to Norway on their own. Wolf agrees. The soldiers will manage somehow. Suddenly, the convoy stops because there's a crashed German airplane blocking the way. In the cockpit, there's a dead pilot, and Wolf realizes that the pilot was hanged on the same rope that Wolf used to execute Atami. Bruno orders everyone to get back in their vehicles immediately and drive out of here. Inside the truck carrying captive women, two soldiers discuss the return of Atami. One of them is reluctant to believe it, but he hears one of the women laughing. She explains that everyone knows about Atami, and now the Germans will witness what happens when they take everything from him. Atami refuses to give up and will keep coming back, defying death. The Finns have a word for such people, Sisu which is impossible to translate. It doesn't mean the strongest person, but rather someone who never gives up. The entire German unit is already doomed, and that's why the woman is laughing. Suddenly, in that moment, Atami kills one of the soldiers, and the second man is tossed out of the truck, ending up under the tank's wheels. Atami then enters the truck and gives the woman the weapons of the fallen Germans, arming them. The convoy continues its journey. Atami takes out the truck driver and a captive woman takes the wheel. Following Atami's orders, she slams on the brakes, allowing him to leap from the truck onto the tank. However, the tank almost collides with the truck. Wolf and Bruno begin to suspect something, but the women in the back of the truck grab the dead soldier's body and wave its hand, signaling that everything is okay. The truck with the women catches up with another truck carrying soldiers, and the soldiers are killed by the women. The young tank crewman watches this in horror, but Bruno pays no attention to it. They're almost near the plane. Wolf gloomily looks at him but says nothing. Meanwhile, Atami is on the tank's roof, tightly gripping a pickaxe. He shares a glance with the woman and then proceeds to strike the tank's hatch. Bruno commands Wolf to go outside and take down Atami. After Wolf counts to three, the tank suddenly breaks, causing Atami to tumble to the ground. Wolf opens fire on him with a machine gun, but Atami manages to sneak around the tank, climb back on top, and launch a surprise attack. Bruno sees Wolf being pulled through the hatch to the outside. There, Atami fights him until they both fall off the tank. Bruno, seeing this, commands the tank driver to drive forward. Meanwhile, Wolf begs Atami not to kill him. Two more German soldiers on a motorcycle approach them, but realizing who's in front of them, drop both their weapons and get off the motorcycle. Atami gets on it and drives off after the tank, leaving Wolf alive. But out of the fog, the former captive women emerge. Heading towards Wolf, he tries to crawl away to defend himself, but his fate is sealed. Wolf screams. Bruno and the young tanker finally reach the Soviet airplane, where the pilot is already waiting for them. After exchanging a glance with him, Bruno kills the tank driver without explanation and gets into the plane, at which point Atami appears, firing on the plane. Nevertheless, the plane does get into the air, but Atami clings to its underside with a pickaxe. The pilot is mortally wounded, but Bruno orders him to hold tight and keep steering. Atami nearly falls down, but clings to the airplane again and Bruno hears it. The pilot reassures him that it's nothing, but Atami continues to hit the plane with the pickaxe and slashes his way inside the craft. Bruno realizes they're in trouble and goes to the sound. Atami throws the pickaxe at him, knocking the weapon out of his hands and fights with his bare hands. Using the static line and the metal clasp on it, Bruno gains the upper hand, but Atami grabs the line at the last moment and hooks it to a bomb, then drops it down. Bruno falls with it onto the deserted tundra and is killed by the explosion. 
Wounded but still alive, Atami discovers that the pilot is dead and the plane begins to descend rapidly. He takes his bag of gold nuggets, straps himself down with several belts, and falls into the swamp along with the airplane. Meanwhile, the liberated women capture a German tank and take it to the Finnish soldiers along with Wolf, who's still alive. The women say that all the German soldiers are dead except one. Using his pickaxe, Atami gets out of the swamp and moves on. He reunites with his dog, gets himself cleaned up, and rides a motorcycle to war-torn Helsinki. Atami walks into the bank, and the soldiers by the entrance hesitate to stop him. All the customers make way for him. Atami approaches the teller and empties his bags filled with gold nuggets. Then, for the first time, he speaks. Bills. Big ones, please. Won't be so damn heavy to carry. The stunned female teller nods in agreement. <laughs> 